We're here with the GoKit Getting Started tutorial. As you may have heard, GoKit is uh, officially released today. We wanted to just uh, go over the resources available and show you a quick little getting started kit here on how to use it. So first up, uh, there's the GoKit page. This has uh, some good information that you should definitely read before you dive in. Has uh, you know teaches you a little bit about what GoKit is, what the, what the different classes do. And moving on, uh, the GitHub repo is where you're going to actually be able to download GoKit. Uh, we'll put links to all these in the description, so we're just going to go through them real quick. We also have uh, API documentation available uh, in the normal location on our website. It has uh, all the different classes, and you can expand these and have a look at what, uh, what all is in here. It has uh, every method that's, uh, that's public and that you'll uh, potentially want to use in here. And then we have uh, seven wiki pages so far, and uh, you probably want to read through these as well. They go through some best practices and just detail how to use GoKit. So we're going to jump right into some code so you can see how easy it is. So this is just a, an empty scene right here with nothing but a cube in it. And uh, made one script here, which is demo UI, and that's all we're going to be working with. So jumping in here, we, you can see we have a public transform. Uh, our cube and that's of course linked up to the cube. So there's different ways you can use GoKit. Um, we're gonna just glance over each of them. So using extension methods is uh, is gonna be the, the easiest and least amount of code but it's also the least powerful. So as an example we'll do a, a position tween here. So when you hit dot on cube here there's gonna be the GoKit extension methods. You know attention to that. Uh, so we'll have uh, anything with a with a little down arrow here as it shows that it's an extension method, and there's quite a few. You can do positions, local position, scale, Euler angles. All the most basic tweens are in here, along with the to and from variants of them. So in the most basic case, let's just say we want to tween the position. So put a duration in here, and you put your end value. And we'll call it 1550. And optionally, you can put whether this is a relative tween or not. We'll uh, we'll leave that. It's uh, by default false. So we'll leave it false for the first little test here and see what happens. So we go to play and then start, and there's our tween. And that's all there is to it. That's using all the defaults. Now, you may want to modify these defaults. For instance, uh, the the Go class by default will have these as the defaults. So the default ease type is set to linear, which is uh, you know pretty boring. Most of the time you won't want to use that. Um, the default loop type is set to restart from beginning, and the other loop type available is a ping pong, which would mean it would go out and then come back. And the default update type is set to update. So this could be update, fixed update, or time scale independent. So most of these they're fine. The the ease type you may want to modify. So let's go ahead and change that. So all you do is say default ease type and you pick your ease type. So something not so bad. We'll do a quinty. So let's go ahead and have a look at what the quintic looks like. So now you can see we're not doing a linear ease anymore. All right. So that's uh that's the basics of of a position tween. So let's just uh, as another example, we'll do a scale, and we'll say scale to. And scale has two variants. You can use either a vector three as the end value, or if you're doing a uniform scale, you can see it has a float as the end value, and it'll just use whatever you pass in for the x, y, and z scale. So let's do a two-second scale. We'll scale it to five, and leave it to the default. And let's see what we got. And sure enough, our cube scales. All right, so that's using extension methods. So there's um, you may want a little bit more control over your tweens, and you may want to tween multiple things at once, and that's uh, where some of these other methods come into play. So the go class has a to and a from. And you can use either of these to tween to or from. And uh, for this one, what we'll do is we'll we'll take that same cube, and we'll do the same duration. But um, instead of tweening the, the scale and the position separately, 
will screen, will, will tween them simultaneously. So the way you do this is you use a tween config and you can actually chain these. So we'll do a tween config that position and we'll put in our end value here. And just like uh, previously, you can do a relative or absolute, and we'll leave it as absolute so that it matches what we did before. And now we'll do a scale. And again, we have a float end value or a vector end value, your choice. So we'll, we'll set that to three. And there you go. So this is gonna simultaneously tween the position and the scale over two seconds. Hit play, and there you go. Scale and position tween. So let's uh, move on to something a little bit more advanced. So now we're gonna do a tween chain. So tween chain is basically, uh, allows you to take any tweens and combine them together so that when the first one finishes, the second one begins, and it, you can chain as many together as you want. So let's go ahead and set up a couple tweens and we'll, uh, we'll do a position and scale again. We'll call it pause scale config. So what we're gonna do is set up two tween configs. First one will be position. And let's call this one 10, 5, 0, and we'll do this one relative. So what it means when we set this to relative is that the tween is actually going to be a by tween. So instead of moving to the value 10, 5, 0, it's going to take the initial position of our cube and move to the initial position plus this vector. So we'll do position. Now let's make it a Euler this time so we see something different. So Euler angles uh, and we'll rotate 0, 360, 0. Okay, so that's it. We have a tween config set up, and that's going to handle our position and scale. So let's uh, let's go ahead and make one more. And uh, for the, actually, let's be a little bit more accurate. Okay, and for this one, we'll do a position scale. And again, we're just going to make a tween config. We'll do position, and this time we'll set it to. Let's set it to be. the cube's current position. And we're gonna leave this one as absolute, so we're, we're not gonna use the is relative parameter, we're just gonna leave it to the default, which is false. And then we'll do a scale and set the end value to three. Okay, so we have two tween configs, except we uh, actually have an error in this one. So we have an extra parenthesis in there. So now what we wanna do is make two separate tweens and we'll call it tween one and two. And the tween class takes in the target object, which is our cube in this case, the duration of the tween, and we'll call it 1.5 seconds, and then the tween config. So that's our first tween. And we'll set up our second tween, which is also gonna target the cube. We'll make this one 1.5, and it's gonna be a position and scale config. Okay, so now we have two tweens set up, and, uh, and just a note here, these configs that you make, you can reuse these. So if you have 10 objects that you want to all have the same tweens, you can just continuously reuse these and save them. All right, so let's make our chain. So tween chains, when you create them, by default, they start paused. So you can make your chain, all your, your chains in your, your start or awake methods and just save them and play them when you're ready. So the chain has a couple different methods here. So you can append, which allows you to append a tween. So we'll append tween one. And if you wanna have a delay in between these two, you can append a delay. So we'll put a two second delay in between the two. And now we're gonna append tween two. So what we've done in this line here is we have we started the chain, we're gonna append the first tween, then there'll be a two second delay, and then our second tween will play. So if we go back over here and we play, 
you notice that nothing's going to happen. And like I said before, tween chains start out in the paused state. So if we want it to start immediately, we'll just call play on it. So going back in here, we can see that our first tween goes, it stops, waits two seconds, and then we scale and go back to that position. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some uh, some more parameters here to our config so we can see what this is capable of. So first thing we'll do is we'll add a material color tween here. We'll call it uh, going to green. And you can see that the, the second parameter by default will tween the color property on your material, which is equivalent to the underscore color. And uh, there's also emission reflect color and spec color if your material supports them. So we'll leave that as the default. And we're going to set an oncomplete handler. And uh, you can see up here that our oncomplete handler is going to pass back the tween. We don't need it for this particular case because all we're going to do is do a debug log. And that's it. So let's go ahead and uh, add this same oncomplete handler to our second tween. So what that'll do now is it'll fire this on complete handler when the first tween finishes and this one when the second tween finishes. Okay, so let's go over here and play this and take a look at what we got. You can see I'm going through the first tween, completes and it dumps the log. We take the delay, go through the second tween, and there's our second log. Alright, so that covers the actually let's go let's go for one more thing before we uh, before we move on. So we have tween flows available as well. So we're going to take this exact same example here and let's turn it into a tween flow. So what's the difference between a tween flow and a tween chain? Uh, the main difference is when you're adding your tweens to a flow, you're actually going to be able to pick the start time. So in this case, uh, no, there, there's no case where two tweens will run together. In the case of a flow, we can actually get tweens to happen simultaneously. So flow has an insert. Uh, method and that's uh, there's no append or prepend or anything like that there's only insert here so you pick the start time so what we'll do is at 1 we'll run our first tween and then at 1.5 we'll go ahead and run the second tween so this the first tween is is one and a half seconds long so uh, we're actually gonna start this when it's only one third of the way through with that so let's go ahead and jump back over here hit play and we should see the tween start right there midway through. And there you go. That's GoKit in a nutshell. We'll have some, uh, some more tutorials in the future that go over some of the more advanced features. Uh, but for now, this uh, hopefully is enough to get everyone started. If you have any questions, be sure to visit the forum topic.